Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and building a small adapter for a ESP32 Vruva module. So let's first find out what Expressive have to show us with the ESP32 Vruva module. So these are the different ESP32 and ESP8266 and so on modules. And we can here have a look and compare the different modules. So make it a little bit smaller. And I have this ESP32 room module and also this ESP32 Vruva module with a small antenna connector or IPEX antenna connector. And the different modules uses the same chip as we see the ESP32 D0WD26 chip version have a little bit different sizes. This 18 by 25.5 times 2.8 millimeter, or we have 18 times 31.4 times 3.3 millimeters. We have the same pin count. We have the same four megabyte flash memory, but we have also an SRAM or PSRAM with a Vruva module. So the difference is we have a an PCB antenna and also the IPEX antenna and also 4 megabyte PSRAM. So here we see my traditional modules with the ESP32 and standalone module and the same module soldered on a ESP32 development kit. And here the same with a small case. We can we can push the module into the case. So we have a nice thing. This is without metal shielding, but the inside is the same as this module and also the size and form factor are really the same. And now I discovered a new ESP32 module, the Vruva module, and it's a similar form factor. You might see it's a little bit longer and you don't have the vertical solder points that all all the solder points on the on the side and if we turn it round as you might see the ground pad beneath the ESP32 chip is not centered it's a little bit off center but i think that's not so relevant and all the spacing and all the solder points are very similar. And if we put them on top of each other, we can see all the dimensions for the first solder connections are very the same. The only thing is it's a little bit longer and we have all the vertical solder point goes through the end of the module. So, and certainly there's a little bit disadvantage. This is the flash adapter for modules. If you solder them to your own boards, you can pre-flash them. So you just put your module into this small golden points and then you can flash it with a USB connection. And after flashing, you just remove the module and you are done. But certainly this don't fit here. So I think today I just prepare my own adapter for this small Vruva module. So in KiCad I first start a new project and then go straight to the part library editor. Then I use my previous defined part for the ESP32 and use this as a template for the new ESP32 Vruva module. Now I open the ESP32 Vruva datasheet and put them side by side with my new part that I will edit in the part library editor. So we can compare all the pin layouts with our datasheet. So as we see, we get 10 pins on the bottom of the ESP32 room module and we have to replace or just move the 10 pins to the sides. So we start by moving the first pins to the side. Five goes on the left side and the other five goes on the right side. 
And then we do just a little bit housekeeping, draw the lines to the positions and do it a little bit nicer. And then we also change the name. So we have not the ESP Room 32 module, we have the ESP32 Vruva module. And now we check also the pins and as you might see pin or GPIO pin 16 and 17 are not connected in this Ruva module. And we can also correct the direction of our GPIO pins or as I would call them GPI pins because as we see in the data sheet they have only an input direction and we can not use them as an output. But in this list there's also listed the GPIO pins 16 and 17 so I get a little bit confused if they are also connected to the outer side of the module. So let's check if we have some other indications that they are connected or not connected. And here in the, in the small schematic we have also the ESP32 chip and let's check if the GPIO pins 16 and 17 are connected to somewhere and our pins are 28 and 27 and yes we can confirm that in the schematics they are also not connected. So that's okay that these two pins are not connected in this module. So we cannot use the GPIO pins 16 and 17 and that's a little bit sad because I just use them very often in my projects. And now let's save our library part and move along and design the footprint of our ESP32 Vruva module. Now we also use the ESP Vroom32 module as a footprint template and the first thing I do is set the grid origin and also set the grid so that we have the spacing that we need from the data sheet. And for the ESP32 Vruva or Vroom module we need a spacing of 50 mil or 1.27 millimeter. And now we just move the pins to the locations where they are in the Ruva module and this is five from the downside to left and the other five goes to the right side of the module. And sure for the right side we also place our grid origin again just switch between 0.1 millimeter pitch and also between 1.27 or 50 mil pitch and then we can just place the pins in the right location. And also a little bit dress up for the six screen. We relocate the small six screen identifier. And after that we can just check our pin locations and all the measurements. And then we can compare this with the data sheet. And last but not least I also relocate the ground pad for the ESP32 chip and just put them on the right location for the Ruver module. And also don't forget to save all your footprints, that's very important. Now I start a new schematic and just begin to insert all the parts that we need for our small board starting by the ESP32 Vruva module then inserting some pin headers with 14 connections and I do this on both sides then the resistor and also the ground symbol and we also need a push button for resetting our ESP32 P32 and also one for flashing that goes to GPIO pin 0. And that's nearly it for our small adapter board. So now let's place the wire connections between the pins and the pin headers and also assign the footprints that we want to use to the parts. In my case I use mostly 0603 SMD components and 
the whole adapter should be an SMD centered board. But I should also be able to solder this by hand. So I, I use a small tip for my soldering iron and soldering all the components with my hands and not with a pick and place machine or just in a reflow oven. No, I just do it by hand. And we also assign all other components with the footprint from our library and also do a last checking of all our wired connections. Then I annotate all parts so that they are the right numbers and signs. And then I do also an electrical rule checking with a small bug button. Now we can also correct some errors we make and also sometimes have to indicate the non-connected pins and also insert some power indicator to tell the electrical rule checking that this is a power line. So we get rid of all the warnings and errors. Next step is to save the netlist from our schematic and also save the schematic. And then we are done and can start with a PCB board. And first we use our netlist to place all the footprints to our PCB. But before we start, I activate the manual footprint placement so that it's not all put on top of each other and it's a little bit easier to move all the components to the right position. And I start by the Ruver module and then place all the pins headers and also the switches and also the resistor. And the rest is just a little bit fine tuning where the pin headers goes and what room we need for our module and so on. And placing the right pitch so the module have to fit in a bread board and I want to use the right pitch between the both pin header rows. So I use just another pin header as an spacing example. And after this I place the milling lines around the board so I know where the margins of our small adapter are and also place a micro byte on both ends so we can break this out of the big PCB and just have to order a big PCB and have different modules on maybe 10 by 10 centimeter board or 100 by 100 millimeters. That's a little bit standard by all the PCB manufacturers I use in China. And after the Placing is done, we can start by the wiring and as you might see the spacing between the pin headers and our module are very small. So I mostly use wires, wire connection to the back side of our board so we can wire everything in the middle of our board and connect them through the board and in the back side all the wires goes to the pin headers if we need it. Sometimes it fits so we can use the front side but most of the wires goes to the back side and also we connect the switches and then if we if we like what we see in our board then we are done. And after placing the wires, I want to start with a ground fill. But before we do this, I also indicate the keep out zones so that some zones where might be our small little antenna is located, then there's no ground fill. And this avoid maybe some disturbance to our Wi-Fi signal. And after the keep out zones, I also indicate the ground fill and I do this on the front side and also on the back side. And you can also play around with, with the settings of the clearance between the pads and also the filling or the mask, the solder mask. So we have a little bit more filling of our board. And now I use the 3D view to have a look in, at our board and also compare the different clearance setting for the ground fill. So we can see where the ground goes and the difference between one setting and the other setting. And now just some renicing or beautifying steps for our board. Just place some text to the board, indicate what 
revision this board is or what's the board for and we can print this on a silk screen and we also place some standard components like the open hardware symbol my own logo goes to the board and maybe a creative comments indication so that no one can sell this board without permission and now let's check the 3D view and see if our board is ready for shipping. And if I accept the board design, then we can do the next step, just the panelizing of the boards. So I save the board with a panelizing name in it and then just draw the margin for our big PCB and put the, all the boards inside the PCB. So we can just order maybe six of the small modules on one PCB. And if we order 10 PCBs, then we get in total 60 modules. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching my video. You can find all the Gerber files and links to the board in the description. And I'd appreciate if you share and like my video and also subscribe to my channel. So I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.